Hey, this is Kevin Phillips again. In this uh, next video on Virtual Studio Tools, I want to show you a couple of things. One, I want to just kind of amend what I did in the previous video, which hopefully you've watched, where I go through how to set up uh, a joystick, how to connect it to a camera, so you can do things like uh, this live interaction. Okay, and you can record that and do this kind of uh, live performance versus having to hand keyframe everything. Um, and the thing I wanted to show you with this was a little bit of an adjustment to how I set up these nodes. So if I double click on this to bring up the nodes, you'll see that uh, that's much simpler than the one that I did in the previous video. Now the previous video I brought up a studio trait which basically read the current state of that and I thought I'd have to adjust that and blend them back together and then feed them back into itself to refresh it. However, all I needed to do was this take my value, convert it to a rotation, plus or minus, and then feed that straight into rotation. Now, if we look at that, you'll notice that X, Y, and Z, or heading, pitch, and bank, X is our rotation, okay, on heading, the other two are pitch and bank, and you'd expect, if you did that, for the camera to be zeroed out and not pointing down. Now, the reason it works and I'll bring up the motion options for it, is because of this little tick box here. Say, do it relative to the current camera position. If I turn that off, it resets the rotation to zero, zero, and whatever the heading is. So now that is what it would look like if I just fed that value straight in. So let's go relative again. Okay, with that out of the way, um, I want to show you this other tool, the control booth. Um, the control booth is a nice user interface system that works with virtual studio tools and even if you're not planning to interactively control elements inside your animation with your device you may still want to use uh, the virtual studio to set up a custom user interface so one thing I had <clears throat> is in studio I said I wanted to record a take okay so I went one shot made sure that was rewound click the play button to start the recording okay recording if moving the camera around like that and then I played it back and that was great okay but I needed two hands for this one on the joystick right to control it and the other one to either press a keyboard shortcut to play or click a button down here now that could be a bit awkward because maybe I just want to grab the joystick and start recording while I'm here operating it. So to do that, all I have to do is under Virtual Studio, get a control booth. And I say, well, actually it'd be nice if I could say, let's click the trigger on the joystick to start the recording. So let's go plus down here on here and go new button command. We double click on that. Now let's go start playing would be a good name for that. Oops. I need to go manager HID joystick track button zero, which is the trigger at the front. And under action, this is where we have to put a command, a light wave command, because everything light wave is doing is executing it through a command system. Now I don't know what the command is going to be just yet, but I'll show you a really quick way of finding that out. So let's just put some garbage in here for now. Well, that'll loop. Okay, and we'll be able to tell if that's actually working if we pull the trigger and I'll say can't execute this light wave command, obviously, because it's not one. So how do I see what is happening with light wave? Well, I'm going to bring up this command history. You find it under the utilities tab, which shows me the history of everything being uh, basically run in light wave up to this point. And then I'll click the play button. And then I'll click the stop button. Okay, I can see the command was called play forward. And when I stopped it, it was pause. So I need to execute play forward command when I click on the trigger. So I'm going to copy that. I am going to, whoops, let's stop that and rewind. Double click. And in action, just paste that command there. And now when I pull the trigger, it'll highlight up here. You can see it highlight when we do something. Cool. 
but I want a way of stopping it. So I'm going to put another button command in there. New button command. I'll say uh, stop playing. Oops. Should never push return until you've done all the other things, obviously. Track. Okay, I'm going to use the other button, the one on the uh, back of the joystick by the thumb. Button one, it's called. And I believe the command was pause from what I saw on the uh, command history there. Okay, so let's click the trigger, play forward, let's press the thumb button, pause. Okay, so those are working really nicely. So now I'm using my device as an interface device to control Lightwave. 